Hi, welcome to the Electronics Channel. I'm Dave Williams. In this video, I want to talk about resistors in AC circuits and the relationship between voltage and current in those resistors, as well as what kind of power gets dissipated by those resistors. Let's start by looking at this really simple example where I have a voltage source that's an AC voltage source and that's applying a voltage across a resistor. In this simple example, Ohm's law is still going to hold true. Voltage equals IR, or if I'm looking at this circuit where I have a known voltage and a known resistance, the current that I will have through that resistor will be equal to the voltage divided by the resistance, or I can write it out as resistance is equal to the voltage over the current. So considering that this is an AC voltage, and let's say that it's a voltage that has a three volt peak value, at every instant in time, Ohm's law is going to apply. Now if this is a two ohm resistor and I have a three volt peak applied, I can say that at every point in time I can apply this version of Ohm's law to calculate the current. So at the time when the voltage is zero, the current is also going to be zero. When the voltage is one volt, then the current is going to be one over two, or it will be 0.5 amps. When the voltage is at two volts, 2 over 2, I will have a current of 1 amp. And when the voltage reach it reaches its peak at 3 volts, I'll have a current of 1.5 amps. And of course, this table just represents four points along the whole curve, but it's a continuous curve, so that current's going to be defined everywhere. But let's just look at these four points. So it, when the voltage is 0, current is 0. When the voltage is 1, current's at about 0.5. When the voltage is 2, the current will be at 1. When the voltage is at 3 volts, the current's going to be at 1.5. And I didn't include negative on this in this table, but I could just put a negative sign in front of these and the table would still be true. So when the voltage is at minus 1, the current's going to be at negative 0.5. When the voltage is at minus 2, the current's going to be at negative 1. When the voltage is at minus 3, the current will be at minus 0.5. And I will get a current curve if I join all the dots in between, because remember it's going to be continuous get a current that looks something like that. And I've replaced my graph with a much nicer looking one that I've created from a simulation. And voltage is continuous, current is continuous, Ohm's law applies at every instant in time. And so what I end up with is a voltage and a current that are in phase with each other. And since I'm dealing with AC signals, I can write out the voltages and currents for these AC circuits as phasors. So I can use my Ohm's law equations, but write them out in phasor form. So the current is equal to the voltage over the resistance. So I can encapsulate all of the information in this table or in this graph here, and I can say I can get a 1.5 amp peak current with a phase angle of zero degrees when I have a voltage of three volts with a phase angle of zero degrees over a resistor which is has an impedance of two ohms with a phase angle of zero degrees. So I've redrawn my circuit here and I've copied the graph of the voltage and current down as well. I've taken the table and I've added a few points in here. I've added some negative voltages and negative currents because I want to show how power relates. And for any electrical circuit, power is going to be equal to voltage times current. So for each one of these cases, for each one of these values for voltage and current, I can calculate the power, which will be in watts. So when both the voltage and current are at zero, the power is going to be zero. Here when I have a voltage of one and a current of, one, of 0 0.5, one times 0 0.5 gives me 0.5 watts. Two volts times one amp gives me two watts. Three volts times 1.5 amps gives me 4.5 watts. Here I get 0.5 watts, 2 watts, and 4.5 watts. When the voltage and current are both negative, I get a negative number times a negative number, which gives me a positive power. So at every instant in time, maybe a better way of writing this out is P of T equals V of T times I of T. So, so this is saying that as voltage and current vary over time, so does the power. And what I can do at every instant in time is take the value of the voltage and the value of the current, multiply them together, and I get power. So for these few points I have in the table here, I can plot these out on my graph. And then on the negative side, because I have a negative number times a negative number, it's still going to be a positive value. So I'll get pretty much the same points. 
And while it's not so obvious from the few points that I've had, this is going to be a sinusoid, but the difference is that it's not centered on zero anymore. A sinusoid like that that has a peak and that and it comes all the way down to zero but does not go below zero. Here's a much nicer version of that graph that I've created from a simulation. So this is showing the power as it's varying over time but typically we don't worry about the power at any instant in time. We usually think about the average power that's being used by a component in the system or the average power that's being delivered by a source in the system. And in general when you're figuring out the average of something, in this case the, the average power, what you're going to do is integrate this signal over one period and then divide by the period. So be, this would be the integral from zero to t, where t is representing one period, so this would be one period here, and then divide by the period. For a sine wave, this calculation is actually quite easy. And if you, can re if you remember, or if you think about this, if I have a sine wave that's centered around zero, the area under the curve there and the area in the curve there are equal, but one's positive, one negative, so they cancel out. So the average is halfway between the two, the positive peak and the negative peak, which in this case is zero. For this case, my halfway between the positive peak and the negative peak is going to be half the positive peak. So I have a peak there of 4.5 volts, a bottom peak of zero. The average power for this case is going to simply be positive peak power, I can maybe call that peak to peak, divided by two. So that will be 4.5 watts over two. So the average power in this case will be 2.25 watts. I do have another video on RMS, or root mean square voltages, which shows another way that average power can be calculated based on the root mean square voltages and currents. However, I just want you to get an intuitive sense from looking at the graph of voltage, current, and power, how the power can be determined from this graph. So I want to wrap up doing an example where I've got the voltages and the currents represented as phasors. So you can see here I've got a voltage that's 120 volts with a phase angle of zero degrees. And this AC voltage is applied across a 10 ohm resistor. And I want to figure out what the current is. Current is voltage over for that resistance. So this will be 120 volts with a phase angle of zero degrees divided by 10 ohms. And since it's a resistor, it has a phase angle of zero degrees. 120 volts divided by 10 ohms gives me 12 amps. And since they both have a phase shift of zero degrees, my current will also have a phase shift of zero degrees. Now one thing I should point out is these numbers here, typically they represent an RMS value. But as long as you are consistent, this value could be a peak value or it could be a peak to peak value. So it just depends on which one is easiest for you to use. And typically RMS is the easiest to use because the average power can be calculated from the RMS voltage and the RMS current. And for more information about why that's the case, you can see my video on root mean square. So I hope this helps you understand the concept of resistors in AC circuits. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.